Welcome to Airplay 24. Join us as we dive into the world of radio theater, where stories come alive through the magic of sound. Hosted by the talented Connie Kopfinger, Airplay 24 brings you a diverse array of plays, each one a unique journey crafted by brilliant playwrights and brought to life by our exceptional cast. Get ready to be captivated, moved, and inspired as we explore new voices and fresh perspectives in the realm of audio drama. So sit back, relax, and let your imagination soar with Airplay 24. Let's get started. Play is called Two Bags Full. Here to tell you more about the play, the players, and this wonderful little group of airplay regulars <laughs> is our co-host, Sabrina Morabito. Thank you, Connie. Our cast of players this evening will be read by Reverend Matthews, Matt Matthews, Miss Jackie will be read by me, Sabrina, Miss Beth by Beth Griffith, Miss Mary by Mary Tierney, and Lizzie by Liz Piccoli. And I will also be reading the stage directions. Time, present, noon. Place, Golden Heights Cemetery. Three women stand at a grave site along a pastor who holds a book open a prayer. It is cloudy and overcast. The sun is trying to peek out, but the light seems a little re reluctant. Thank you. Uh Thanks for coming, everyone. I just hate to see a life go by unnoticed, you know? Mm. Tilly McGrath was 95 years old, and all she had to show for herself was two big garbage bags of stuff. Just about broke my heart. They're still in my truck. I never even opened them yet. The young woman at the, at the nursing home said that Tilly especially wanted me to have them. She specifically instructed her to tell me to open them with whoever came to her funeral. She had a beautiful soprano voice. I recalled when I started as choir director, up teen years ago, she was my first friend here at the church. Brought me muffins out all the time. Yeah, that was only so you'd give her the solos. I never knew her to be anyone's friend. She had a beautiful soprano voice. Yeah, she did. Mean person, though. My little granddaughter, Ellie, went to her house selling Christmas wreaths, and she tried to swat her with a mop. Ellie was a wee little thing, too, only 10. I never saw her try to hit anyone, but she certainly has had her share of being judgmental about her neighbors. Wow, I am... Glad that you girls won't be at the pearly gates when I get there, speaking of judging. Just speaking our minds, Rev. Not really judging anyone. Yeah, I liked Tilly. We all liked Tilly. But it wasn't our fault she never liked us back. She was lonely, poor soul. I can't even imagine not having any friends or family. Well, they say she had a little brother that was a mental defective that they kept hidden under the cellar steps, barely fed him. Story is he was only nine pounds when he died at the age of five. I remember that story when we were little. I thought it was made up. It had been. That's criminal. What would parents ever do that? I don't know. I was afraid to ask her. I know. It was criminal. Now wait, if it was true, why weren't the parents arrested? Um, maybe because they were related to the law. Yeah, her Uncle Pete was a judge. Judge Peter McGrath in Pimbertown. Okay, okay then, ladies, enough. I asked you here to celebrate the life of Tilly McGrath with me. I think it might be time to start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we stand before you to honor the life of your child, Tilly McGrath. To some, she seemed to have lost the joy and meaning of her life. But to others, she was a kind and gentle soul who reached out in kindness. Oops, not the women we knew. Gosh, Rev's going to make us leave. Please. Yeah, I like Tilly. We all like Tilly. But it wasn't our fault she never liked us back. No, 
I think some people are born mean, rotten like bad apples. What about these kids today going in schools, shooting and killing like there's no tomorrow? That's exactly the problem, ladies. To them, there is no tomorrow. To us, to people of God, we believe that there is no end. World without end. Amen. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what they say, no God, no peace. I don't think that was Tilly's problem. She was a church-going woman. She definitely was blessed with a beautiful soprano voice. A younger woman comes running up to the grave site with a guitar. It is Lily, Lizzie, one of the workers from the nursing home. Well, hello there, Lizzie. Wonderful that you could join us here today. Sorry, I'm late. I just got off to work. I, I, had, I asked to leave early and I told them where I was going and then the nurse just laughed at me and said, like, she's going to know, and then shook her head. Hmm. Lizzie, <sighs> listen, I was just starting the prayers. Is there anything you want to say about Tilly before I begin again? Yeah. I just wanted to say that Miss Tilly was like family to me. Like the grandma I never had. As an orphan, you grow up sort of lost. I was always feeling like there was something missing, something, I don't know, something other kids had. But I, I don't know what it was. I started at the nursing home while I was just in high school. And Tilly showed me what I was looking for. She showed me love and kindness. She used to try to give me money to buy things, but I, I told her I'd lose my job. Where in the world did she get money? Dingy, hiding it all away, pretending to be poor. Meanwhile, our church is paying for her funeral. I never knew she had a dime. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. All I know is Tilly McGrath was one of the sweetest women I ever met in Clarion County. In my 22 years as pastor here, I never felt the touch of such warm hands. And warm hands are said to be a sign of a warm heart. Let's continue our prayers then, shall we, ladies? Reverend Matt, did you open those two bags full of Tilly's belongings? Nope. They're still all tied up sitting in the back of my truck. Good, because Tilly said that God told her who would be at her, fr her funeral today. That she had a, like a dream. And he told her to make sure that each one of you get a personal thank you. Oh, nice of her. It is. Truly. Not just a thank you, but a gift of her appreciation for being her friend. She wants us to open the bags and inside one of them is a bed pillow. And in that will be envelopes with each of our names on it. So thoughtful. She was always so thoughtful. Yeah, in her own way. Did Tilly say when we should open the bags? Yes, before the final prayers, before you cover her with, with the dirt. But first, I, I wrote a little song. And if you, for your folks, I and like if anybody wants song. to sing along, you know, please join in if you can. It goes like this. I gathered up the bags and set them in the bed of my old truck. Two lightweight containers were the remnants of a life and the aftermath of dying. Not much for 90 years, not much at all. All that remains all that remains, all that remains is just so small, just so small. All that remains is just so small. I wonder how it comes to this that life can render down to this degree that two small garbage bags could hold what remains of 90 years hopes and dreams how everything 
is just so small. All that remains, all that remains, all that remains is just so small, just so small. Life sometimes seems too much and filled to overflowing with existing. Wading through the torrents of the storm we call our life. From magnitude to finitude, oh, the end is just so small. All that remains. All that remains, all that remains is just so small, just so small. All that remains is just so small. All that remains, all that remains, all that remains is just so small, just so small. All that remains is just so small. Okay. That is such a lovely tribute, Lizzie. Thanks. She she just inspired me. Reverend Matthew, can you get the bags now? All right. I can do that. Excuse me. All right. Uh, let's see. Ah. Uh. I have here uh, the bag and uh, her pillowcase. Oh, some envelopes. Hmm. Well, let me see. Lizzie, I believe this one's for you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And Ms. Mary, uh, this one's for you. Thanks, Rev. Uh, Ms. Jackie, for you. Thank you. Or shall I say... Thank you, Tilly. And well, this one's for me. Uh, wait, where's mine? Oh, oh, oh here, here. It, it, it was stuck behind mine. Hmm. You see that? Someone's always trying to cheat me, even the dead. Well, shall we open them now all at once? Yes, that's what Tilly requested. Oh, my. There's several hundred dollar bills here. I I can now afford the repairs at the mission. She gave me two $100 bills. Isn't that kind of her? It is, it is. Wow. She gave me five $100 bills. Well, that's very generous. Mm-hmm. This is a full scholarship for me to go to community college. It's like my dream comes true. Come true. Lizzie, that is truly amazing. We just never know what God's plan is for us. Uh, all I got was a $5 bill. She just wanted to insult me. Now, just a moment, Miss Beth. Maybe Tilly meant something no. else. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's a note. It says... To Beth, <laughs> I bequeath my antique collection of Hummel figurines. Oh, for she will understand how valuable they are. Allow these little figures to bring you great joy as they did to me. They were like my children. Share them with your children and grandchildren. Love, Tilly. I think there is time that it is time to conclude this part of the service. 
with a moment of silence, and then we can start our prayers over again. Amen. 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 Everyone repeats the amen, then drops their heads in silence as the sun comes up from behind the clouds, brighter than ever. Blackout. Thank you for joining us for Airplay this month. We'll be back next month. Please join us again.